Uh, today I thought I'd show you the sort of collection I have of uh, clasp knives. As you can see, there's quite a few different types here. Um, the ones along the top, these are all British issue ones, and the ones at the bottom are the post-war, uh, I think they're Belgian. Someone told me they're Belgian, and they're all marked ABL. Um, a lot of them, you're going to pick these up. Uh, uh, variety of places you're going to get them in car booties, uh, car booties um, market stalls, uh, antique dealers, places like that. And the prices of them are relatively inexpensive. Uh, a lot of the ones I have, especially these ones, uh, these are all dated. Uh, hopefully, you can zoom in on this one. Well, this one's 1940. Uh, you can see it's had a lot of use. Um, so I'm guessing this has been in somebody's pocket during the war. After the war, he's had it and he's used it as a general purpose knife. And you can see it's just been sharpened away to nothing. Uh, it's quite... It's, it's not that unusual to see a lot of the blades like this. Like, just with the ends nicked off. But... They're really good, handy items to have. All these different types of pocket knives. And every time I see them at markets and what have you, I pick them up, right? And I know I don't need them. I mean, if you look at the amount I have, you know, I'm not short of a, a pocket knife. But I can't walk past and just let them sit for another 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, a lot of the basic ones, you can see here, um, they don't have the marlin spike, unlike this one. Now the marlin spike on the back of these, um, these are for uh, rope work. So if you're tying knots, um, doing lashings, things like that, you would use the spike uh, on the back. Now this particular one, this one is, uh, as I understand, it's a Royal Navy issue one. This one from, oh, can't make it out, 1945. <clears throat> but these ones, these are the Belgian ones. There's a very, very little difference between these ones and the British ones. <clears throat> In fact, what I'll do is I'll put two together. So this is a, this is a British one. This one's made... Let's see. This one was made 1946. <clears throat> this is a Belgian one, made 1951. And really, the only differences that I notice is on the Belgian one, you got the two little pins here. On the British one, you don't. You flip them over. Very little difference. And not that long ago, you're probably talking in the last five, ten years, <clears throat> you could go to military shows and you would find buckets of these Belgian ones. And they were selling them for two or three pounds. You know, you, you could you could buy them that cheap. And that's why I've got that many of these Belgian ones. Purely because they were so inexpensive. Um, at the minute now, you know, the supply of these has dried up. You know, you're, you're going to be lucky if you're going to find them in usable condition. You know, they're all rusted up. I mean, the ones that you're finding now are the ones that, that are at the bottom of the bucket, you know. Uh, but the design hasn't really changed over the years. So if we look at these two, I know these are well past uh, post-war, sorry. Move this out of the way. But these are the sort of knives up until... Fairly recently, you were still getting issued in the army. I mean, I got issued one like this when I joined the army in 1990. Um, I, I was an engineer, and the one that I had had a spike at the back. But these ones, I mean, this one was marked 1959. It's not very good, I'm trying to get the date on this. Too much sunlight, I think. And then this one... 
1968. And they're still in very, very good condition. So my advice, I think, if you're at a market, a car booty or anything like that, and you see one of, one of these, pick it up and, and buy it. Because at some point, you're not going to be able to pick these up anymore. <clears throat> and you're probably talking 10, 15, maybe 20 quid. That's what I would be comfortable paying uh, for, for something like this. The only one that did cost me a little bit more was this one. As I say, this navy one, and I think this was 25 quid. Um, but the condition of it was excellent. I mean, it's, it's been used, but, you know, it's, it's not been abused, if you know what I mean. So. <clears throat> I hope you found that interesting. As I say, there was a... There was an earlier pocket knife. I've still to find one. Um, the only difference was it had a different type of tin opener. So instead of having like this type of tin opener, it had something like what was on this. This is an old sort of tin opener, can opener thing. This one's dated 1944. But the old pocket knives had something like this on it. And it looks like a, a tiny knife blade. But it's not sharp, not sharp at all. But it's for piercing the tin and opening the tins. So you had a, a little stubby blade, uh, little stubby blade like this, on your pocket knives. So <clears throat> at some point I will get one. I'll find one. I'll track it down. And that's that. Right. Thanks very much. I'll speak to you all later. Right, bye.